In this video, I'd like to cover the technical fundamentals of the BISC DAO. Now, the BISC DAO is a rather complex mechanism that needs more than a couple of minutes to thoroughly explain it, but this video should give you the big picture. So let's get into it. The big idea here is that every DAO action is an on-chain Bitcoin transaction. So buying and selling BSQ, making a proposal, voting, these are all Bitcoin transactions. But some of these transactions come with extra data. For example, proposals have additional input data, like the name of the person making the proposal and a link to more details. And that data needs to be stored somewhere. Turns out BISC stores this data right in its own peer-to-peer -peer network. So that makes two components to the data model for the BISC DAO. There's the Bitcoin network, where every DAO action is recorded as a Bitcoin transaction, and the BISC peer-to-peer -peer network, where additional data is stored as necessary. Now let's take a look at how that looks and why both components are so important. Here is a basic depiction of a proposal in the BISC DAO. <clears throat> on the left, you can see how it's stored on the Bitcoin blockchain, and on the right, you can see how it's stored on the BISC peer-to-peer -peer network. I want to point out the connection between the two items. On the right, in the proposal details, you'll see a transaction ID. This W6C string matches the transaction ID on the left for the Bitcoin transaction. Furthermore, the op return output in the Bitcoin transaction, this LDT string, matches the hash of the proposal details item on the right. So the result is that if you're a troublemaker and you wanted to sabotage the BISC DAO and change people's proposals, you'd have a tough time because the hash that's calculated of the proposal details object when it's first created is stored on the Bitcoin blockchain. So any changes you make will change the hash and won't match the hash on the Bitcoin blockchain and the proposal or new proposal will be invalid. So there are two practical results of this data model. The first is that we use the immutable nature of the Bitcoin network as a record of integrity for the state of the BISC DAO. For example, nobody can change the content of a proposal after it's made. The second is that it preserves the sovereignty of every BISC user. The BISC DAO is a mechanism for reaching consensus with other people. But since all data is distributed on the Bitcoin blockchain and BISC peer-to-peer -peer network, any BISC user can connect a full Bitcoin core node to BISC and verify the state of the DAO for themselves. There's no need to trust anyone to determine how much BSQ you have or anyone else has, what the results of a vote should be, etc. Now let's go over the voting cycle. The voting cycle is the heart of the BISC DAO. It's how decisions are made and, crucially, how new BSQ is issued. There are four phases. Proposal phase, blind voting, vote reveal, and vote result. The length of each phase is measured in blocks. On average, the proposal phase should last about three to four weeks, and the other phases should last about a couple of days. Now, we've already covered the practical side of this process, how it works for users, but what's happening in the background? Let's take a quick look. During the proposal phase, any user can make a proposal, contributor or trader. When a user makes a proposal, the proposal data is broadcast to the BISC peer-to-peer -peer network, and the hash of that proposal is included in the corresponding Bitcoin transaction. During the blind voting phase, users cast their votes. Votes are encrypted, hence the term blind vote, and then broadcast to the BISC peer-to-peer -peer network. A hash of the vote is stored in the corresponding Bitcoin transaction. During the vote reveal phase, BISC clients make a Bitcoin transaction with their vote decryption key. As a user, you don't have to do anything during this phase. The BISC client will take care of making the Bitcoin transaction on its own. Just make sure your client goes online during this phase to make sure this happens. 
And then in the vote result phase, each BISC node will calculate the result of voting based on all ballots it's gathered from the BISC peer-to-peer -peer network. Now, of course, each ballot will be encrypted, so it'll use the decryption keys from the vote reveal transactions, and it will get voting weights from the blind voting transactions. Now, there are lots of nuances here that I've left out. For example, since the BISC peer-to-peer -peer network is a distributed system, it has eventual consistency, meaning that you can't rely that every BISC node will have a complete collection of all data at any given time. And so that complicates the implementation of some of these steps. But these nuances are beyond the scope of this video. In any case, that should give you a basic idea of what's happening behind the scenes when you use the BISC DAO. If you're interested in learning more, I'll link to a write-up with more details in the description.